This is one of the most famous experiments in linguistics. One of these shapes is called Booba, the other is called Kiki. Which is which? This was invented in 1929 using slightly different words, and it's been refined over time. For most people, the pointy shape is Kiki, and the rounded shape is Booba. The majority of studies... Wow, that is... That is, a, that is a lot of citations. The majority of studies find that pointy shapes are more associated with unvoiced plosives and front vowels, so ta, pi, ka, and round shapes are associated more with voiced plosives, nasals, and back vowels, so bu, ge, no. Okay, but that's just English, right? We have words like point and balloon. Maybe we're just copying associations from words that we already know. One of the founders of modern linguistics has an entire theory named after him about there being no relation between the form of a word and what it represents. But there is a study where English speakers were given pairs of words in a language from Peru. In each pair, one word was for a bird and one was for a fish. And the English speakers, who didn't know the language, who knew nothing even close to the language, they could sort those words into birds and fish a little bit better than chance. Not well, but out of hundreds of people answering thousands of questions, they got 58% right. That is a statistically significant result. And there's another study where Hebrew speakers were given pairs of Chinese characters with opposite definitions, and then they were asked to match up the characters and what they meant. Again, slightly better than chance, about 55% right. And if people who speak different languages have even a slight ability to figure out completely unfamiliar words, well, that raises the question, do humans have some sort of built-in associations between sounds and symbols and things in the real world? Booba and Kiki have been tested in a lot of languages and... Yeah, there seems to be something there. What researchers call a type of cross-modal correspondence, or sound symbolism. Correlations between phonemes, the sounds we make, and traits like shape, texture, brightness, size, or even taste. Maybe that's down to cross-activation between brain regions. Researchers into synesthesia have spent a long time on that. Or it could be repeated association. An elephant makes a deeper sound than a mouse. A large dog usually barks lower and longer than a small dog. If you shout into a big, round cave, it'll reflect back deep, round, resonating tones. Shout into a tiny cave with a lot of sharp angles in it, and you'll hear higher, sharper tones. Something that is brittle is more likely to make a sharp, sound, something like kiki, when you hit it or break it or shatter it. Something soft and round is more likely to make a noise like booba. I need to stress, this is one theory from a couple of papers. Don't take this as gospel. It is right to be sceptical about that. Plus, it doesn't always work. A paper from 1975 shows the results of a booba kiki style test on Songhe speakers in Papua New Guinea, where the results were like they were picking at random. No preference. And in 2017, another test on Shuba speakers in Nepal. Again, no preference. The likely reason is that the nonsense words they chose could not exist in those languages. It'd be like giving English speakers a test to choose between ngoba and tlat. You can't start a word with ng or tl in English, so the choice doesn't make sense. The frustrating thing is there isn't much data on the failures. Researchers often don't publish the negative results, and besides, it's very difficult and very expensive to give linguistic tests to people who've never been exposed to any of the major world languages. But according to all those studies, that booba kiki distinction is true for most people. There may be a link between some sounds and some real-world properties, and that may be why English speakers were able to distinguish birds and fish in that Peruvian language. The birds' names had more high front non-rounded vowels, e and e. They have more sharp sounds. And while there are plenty of exceptions, birds do have more sharp beaks and claws than your average fish does. There's an episode all about this on Lingthusiasm, the podcast that's run by my co-author Gretchen McCulloch. I recommend it. The link is in the description.